I'm back in living colour. Still in the coronavirus uh, shutdown or uh, lockdown, as they say. And I, I wanted to carry on making videos as long as I can, but uh, the fact is, it's very difficult getting the equipment. Uh, it doesn't seem to appear, be appearing, even though uh, even though it's paid for and it, it should be here, but it isn't. However, the secret amp has arrived. The one where I put the, the thing on the, uh, the YouTube channel and said, guess this. Now, actually, some people did guess it. Well, I wasn't telling. You know how it is. You've got nothing else to do. <laughs> Keeps you busy. At least I think, uh, I think it does, and I think it's a good thing to uh, get a bit of participation, don't you? At least I'm participating. Where have you been? <laughs> I get millions of guys, by the way, uh, on my channel that simply don't subscribe. Why don't they subscribe? Who knows? Who cares? But listen, that actually matters. So if you're one of them guys that doesn't subscribe, and I'm doing all this, this work here, and it costs me a lot of money, just trust me on that. I think, uh, I think you're not playing your part quite as much as you should do. And, you know, subscribers do matter. Uh, that's a fact of life with YouTube, no subscribers, and you go that way and you'll never see me again. How bad's that? But in any case, I wanted to show you how this thing arrived. It's boxes down there on the floor, which I've now washed my hands from. This had clearly never been out since it was packed up somewhere in, I think, California. Yeah, that might be a clue. <laughs> It'd be two seconds and you'll know about it if you haven't seen it from the heading. But here it is. Uh, what I want to do is uh, disrobe it <laughs> on camera. I think I can do that. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to get the camera a bit closer, even just for taking this cover off, because I want to show you how it arrived. Uh, it's probably one of the best presented amplifiers I've ever bought. And I think that matters at the sort of money that this one is. Presentation goes a long way. Now you might know, I uh, before this, I bought a, a Friedman amp. Uh, unfortunately, the Friedman amp I couldn't get on with it was cheaper than this admittedly but it was just there in its box and it it was just like every other amp except it had a little switch on that for me a Jerry Cantrell switch didn't seem to make that much difference and I didn't think it was worth the difference in money uh, against uh, a lot of other amps that I already own if you want the truth but this one certainly is something very different I'm hopping on here but this is why you watch these videos you do want to know uh, the truth about the product, not just the sales videos. <laughs> oh, and lastly, this is in 4K. You should be able to see, let's see how far I can get, you should be able to see the whites of my eyes. <laughs> so let's zoom down there now. I can't wait. I know what it is. And you won't be able to wait either when we take it apart and take a look at it and then play it and do all the things that you should really do in a proper review. Let's go and get the camera out close and have a look how it was presented first. I think it's great, honestly. So I hope you can see all that. Uh, yeah, look how it's presented. It comes in its case, it's all nice. You know, you get a lot of this stuff where these are just thrown in the box, like on the Mesa apps. <laughs> Somebody's taken time to, to put this together in here. Well, you're going to see what it is any time, aren't you? And there it is, the PT-15 IR from John Sir. Yeah, an amp that's a little bit different than, uh, well, anything else out there. And that's one of the reasons I chose it. I cer certainly didn't choose it because of Pete Thorne, because <laughs> I remember Pete Thorne of the, quote, old days, when he was telling me that the uh, Axe FX was the greatest thing under the sun, and clearly it wasn't. Uh, funny how he likes tube amps again now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. The secret's out. It's the PT-15 IR, and it's signed on the front by Pete Thorne. So much for Pete. Actually, I don't mind him these days. I used to dislike him uh, all them years ago. But there you go. That's the way he was. Now he's changed and seen the light. 
clearly as Narcissa did said axe fx on the front yeah so there it is there's a lot to look at in this amp and uh, that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to look at the amp and in the amp and have a close look at all the things that nobody ever shows you and i'm actually looking forward to this one if you want the truth you know when i looked at the friedman uh i took it out there first into the studio and had a a good play I never actually got to the table here and uh, no I wasn't that impressed the, this massive difference admittedly this is far more expensive than the Friedman was but Friedman makes some very expensive amps as well and uh, judging any of them by the one that I received and um, what benefits there were I didn't see that many uh, no I had to send it back I really did uh, Although, you know, I looked at a couple of Friedmans over the years and never really sort of got on with them. I, I thought it was time for a change with it saying Jerry Cantrell. It wasn't. It wasn't time for a change. So it went back. I paid the extra money, which is a substantial amount of money extra. And bought this one. Uh, so I hope you all uh, appreciate it out there because you're going to see this amp in a way that you never have before. Here's something I just wanted to show you as I was uh, taking the chassis out just to show you. See that? Or indeed the bottom one. They're all actually slack. Just bear that in mind, won't you, Mr. Sir? And what I also want to point out is while these are slack and move around, you can see the screws are actually tight. So it's like the washer's bottom out. I don't really understand why that is, but there you go. Now when you've taken out these two screws, uh, this unit here will just literally slide out. Well, there you go. It was easy enough to remove from the chassis and easy enough to just slide the reactive load box out. Very nice and clever way that they did that. And uh, that actually goes in on the side. You'll, you'll see that a bit later as we go around and look at the chassis. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a, a quick look at the top here and then we'll go off under, underneath and uh, yeah see what's inside okay well here we are I'm looking at the main chassis by the way it's made of aluminium it makes a change you don't see many like that these days but uh, it's nice nice to see that very well put together you can just tell from the quality just even just looking at it without going out of a look anywhere else really you uh, yeah, so you've got the usual sort of stuff. Number of preamp tubes. And I'm not that impressed with the preamp tubes. They're the same brand as this, the ARS. Now, ARS tubes, Chinese tubes. Now, they might be quality or not, but I'm not entirely sure they are. I would have expected, uh, to be honest, <laughs> rather better tubes than ARS but there you go that's what they put in and that's what you've got uh, unless you want to go and spend the money on one two three four five preamp tubes and two power amp tubes that's what you're staying with so that's got the tubes out of the way right away personally I'll be taking them and pulling them out and uh, putting some new ones in of a decent brand uh, I don't like the Chinese stuff so much I prefer the Russian stuff myself that's just a preference that I have. There's not really much else to look on the top. You've got the, the power transformer. It's a bit of a chunky thing. It's a TRX0038-12676. Yeah, there it is. And the output transformer's there. It's not that big, unfortunately. But I suppose it doesn't need to be for the amount of wattage that this puts out, which we'll come back to later. Yeah. All very well made, uh, that's that's the main thing, and uh, you can see there's no, no quality skipped, and that, that's the important bit that I always like to look at when you're talking about uh, amplifiers, and you know, what they've got to stand on the road, and what, even if they're not on the road, you don't want one failing at 12 months, do you? Well, there's one thing you can say right off the bat, you can see that it's a, it's a well-made product. You know, they've taken the time to do the sort of things that you might expect they would. Things like 
flying leads to the potentiometers. Nice and easy to change, you know, type of thing. And by the way, those pots are alpha pots. A lot of people seem to be using those these days. And what's happened to CTS, I wonder? Maybe it's a pricing issue. Who knows? Anyway, I don't think there's anything wrong with alpha pots, but do know that the alpha pots are actually the smaller ones. They're about, uh, I don't know, three quarters of an inch across on these particular ones. So what we have is a main PCB and we have a separate PCB up here, which we'll come back to and have a look at in a moment. We've got this little vertical board at the back that relates to probably uh, to do with the IRs and the loading and not, uh, you know, USB. And uh, yeah, not all else. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, let me flip this over and we can go down and have a, have a look a bit closer rather than just at a distance like that. It always tells a story, doesn't it? Okay, well, taking a look closer, uh, you've got this board over this side. You can see that it goes down and round this bit. That's the uh, power tube board. If you look carefully enough, you can see where the power tubes are actually soldered onto the board. See that? You've also got uh, down this end of the board, you'll see it in a, a few moments. Well, you can just about see it on camera. If you look just down there, you can see a blue adjuster. It's a bias adjuster, that is, uh, for this main power board, power tube board. So let's move a little bit further around. Actually, before we go there, you can have a quick look there. These are the outputs. Uh, these two, this bottom one is the one that doesn't need the speaker. And this top one here is the one that does need the speaker. The one with the little red thing around it, which you'll get to see later on. This one here is just a selector for the uh, ohms range for the speaker. Yeah. You notice how nice the wiring is in here. I don't know whether you actually get to figure it out properly on camera but it's all nice and here yeah well there you go uh, we're now looking at the amp the other way we were looking over there before we're now looking the other way and right from the offset you've got round here these are the uh, power and the standby there the great thing you'll notice about those there's none of that cag around them trying to hold these switches in place like there was on the Axe FX, which has got to be one of the worst ones I've ever seen. It's almost like chewing gum, that was. But this is how it should be. In any case, moving along a bit, if you look at that little board we've got down there, that's the board that handles all the, uh, the cabs and the banks and things like that, you know, for the switching. And uh, it's got its little... Uh, leads off that board. Further down here on this board, this whole area, I would say across to here, give or take, this whole area, is really power supply type of related area. And that little connector on, you can just about see there, is where the reactive load connects to uh, on the side of the amp, the one that's actually in the case. Did a good job of that, didn't they? And you can see from about uh, the end here, just the other side of that, this is where, it's just my opinion of course, so I've got no diagrams or anything, this is really the preamp, uh, the majority of it. And if you look careful, you can see where the tubes are. And once again, they're soldered onto the board, I guess, as many people do these days. You've also got... A few relays, there's one there, there's one there, there's one over there to contend with. And those will be switching various bits uh, in and out depending on what channel you choose, I guess. Uh, but all quite nice, really. Uh, but it is just a PCB. Remember, this is no hand uh, soldered board. And uh, you've got to remember the cost of the unit, uh, which uh, in England was about uh, £2,700. 
that's a lot of money that's well well over three thousand two hundred dollars expensive and down in the corner there this is that little where uh, you've got the input there but below that you've got this little board that you probably can't see much of but this is the one that handles the uh, augs in and out you know the one for the headphones uh, yeah there it is down there yeah so this is input up here and that's where it goes in I guess okay well here we are at the section for the FX loop there you can see that you've got uh, the foot switch here that goes over there and you've got the uh, output over here for a line out there. you've also got this little board down here and that little board includes an arm chip which was in a, a UK uh, product arm uh, in fact uh, arm came about uh, from people like uh, Herman Hauser and another guy Chris Curry I think it was from the BBC computer way back in the really the early 80s and uh, so I know a little bit about that a little bit and there they are today but unfortunately arm uh, the people that make arm were sold to the uh, Chinese or Japanese one or the other recently well, I think that's about it for in here uh, what I want to do is go and have a, a quick look at the reactive load and then we can uh, put it back together and get on with this okay well here's the reactive load and you can see that it sort of plugs into the side of the amplifier through this little uh, yeah 6.3 mil jack which is quite a clever way of doing things I guess uh, now I could flip the bottom off but I'm not going to because I don't want to start groveling around inside this I just want to show you what you've got inside here uh, this is how you get the uh, the output power reduced and what they are basically is just basically well resistors <laughs> big fat resistors that are stuck on the side of the case and that's it that's all it is I guess on this uh, it's probably the same as inside the one you'd buy and what they've done is just fitted it in the case made the case a bit bigger now that was a clever idea I haven't seen anybody else doing that uh, yeah so it's all pretty good yeah okay well here's a quick look around the back uh, you can see it's very uh, well laid out amp actually and uh, you've got everything where you need it a couple of uh, fuses for the outside which is uh, makes a change compared to some of the things I've seen and uh, this back covers fitted on by the way uh, which I thought was interesting with proper set screws with inserts into the wood and that's not the only place uh, if you look at the reactive load the two screws that hold that in place are also uh, captive screws into the wood uh, with proper uh, you know machine screws holding everything in place that's a sign of real quality because you don't get that on the cheaper amps and you definitely don't get it on any Chinese ones okay well I'm not going to spend all day on it but uh, let's go as we mean to proceed what have we got top one here is a HT fuse and remember that the uh, fuse ratings here are different uh, for 240 volts what this amp is as they might be for your area it may be 120 or some other similar voltage uh, we've also got a mains fuse here which again is 250 volts I think that one says yeah that's the fuse but it's 240 volt amp if we look along here you can see uh, it's marked as 240 volts input and it says there 85 watts input there's your mains connector everybody's familiar with them aren't they uh, you've got your model at the top and uh, some sort of serial number which I'm not going to show you but that's life moving along a little bit these are the two outputs that we see uh, on many reviews the one with the red on at the bottom is if you fit a speaker in there it has to have a speaker on the other end of that cable and if it doesn't have it can uh, can do this amp a lot of harm that's why it's covered in red the top one you can just pull it in and out as you at will even with the thing running yeah no problem then you've got an impedance selector here for 8 and 16 ohms it will handle covers all that in the manual then we move on to CE approvals now 
CE approvals where I come from, I'm always very wary about them and making sure that, you know, they are as they should be. There's no reference in the manual to any uh, self-certification, even fractal like that. <laughs> but there, there is no, uh, no mention of approval for anything other than FCC, other than these two things stuck on the back. One CE approval and the other ones for the we, di we directive, which is, relates to uh, disposal of product. There's another one that could have been on there, which would have been Rosh compliance, but you don't have to actually put anything on there for Rosh compliance. And even if you did, there are so many different symbols, it would be painful. So I think the best thing about this, at this point in time regarding CE approval, is to say, uh, yeah, well, there's no certificate. I didn't see it online. Yeah, well, go figure. And here's the other part of the amp. Uh, on the back at least, uh, you've got an FX loop, which is good, you've got a send and return, there's no adjuster on there or anything like that, but that's just life. <laughs> I don't think there's anything uh, where you can actually adjust that. There might be, but we'll find it later. <laughs> We've got a foot switch in, which it does come with, and I'll show you the foot switch uh, in a little while. And then we've got this line out section, uh, balanced or unbalanced off this little switch here. And uh, you've also got this USB in. Uh, this is where you'd be loading up your IRs. I think it can handle up to 16, and they have to be in a WAV format, WAV WAV format. I think they'll handle, uh, I think 21 or 22 seconds. I think the 48 kilohertz on this one, and uh, 21 or 22 seconds. Somebody asked me about uh, that some while back on another product. Well, there's the answer for this one. And down the bottom here, you've got this FCC sticker that's for FCC. But as I said, very little about CE other than just a mark. Mm. Now, one of the reasons for buying this amp is that it's got lots of these other features that aren't in any other amp that I can find, really. Uh, so I wanted to, uh, to get an amp that was something different. And uh, I don't mean different as in bad i mean different as in extra features and really well made which this should be and it probably is well it looks like it is to me yeah so let's look at the front and by the way as we look along this on the front you can see that all these uh all these pots are all turned down to zero and that's exactly as it arrives with you Whoever's doing them is doing a, a pretty good job of uh, putting them together, putting them in the boxes. And the presentation's actually as exceptional as anything I've ever seen. Yeah. If only I'd got that CE certificate. <laughs> there you go. So let's look along the front. This is the input. This is where you'd stuff your guitar. Pretty obvious, really. It says input on it. And then above that, we've got this, this little level here which it handles and it, a headphone out that right out of that one there. Which I thought was pretty good. And you've got an augs in below it. So you can feed some music in here and it'll come out with your headphones and you can mix with this little IR level, HP level they call it. Uh, and that'll mix the signal that's coming out with the audio back out of these headphones. So you can sort of balance everything up and play to it. She's pretty good. Bear in mind that you don't actually need a speaker in this amp for it to work. You can just turn it on with no speaker, believe it or not. That's it. That's what you can do. So let's move along a bit further to this section, this side of the line. And this is really the uh, McQueen channel, channel one. They call it green channel. We've got all the usual things. We've got a level one and a gain one. We've got this bright switch, which can make it a bit toppy. We've got a treble and a bass. Well, if you really want the bright, <laughs> it's there. And it can make it fenderish, very fenderish, I thought. Uh, particularly bearing in mind you've got six V6s in there. Yeah. Let's move along a bit further. Okay, well, we're moving into this middle section now, where anything between these two lines. And 
really what you've got is it's classed as two channels but really it's more like one <laughs> well not quite but you'll get what I mean in a moment they're, they're both voiced the same and part of the reason I guess why they voiced the same is you've got the bass middle and treble shared between these two sides there they are down the bottom bass middle and treble each section has got a bright switch just like channel one had and each section's got a gain and a level and again and a level and in this section they do call it gain two and level two and gain three and level three so think of them as different but the same if you will uh, shared uh, EQs yeah but they do say that they are voiced the same so you could set one up with a semi distortion and one up with a lot of distortion or drive okay we're in the last home run <laughs> and we've got a master presence here which is a bit weird and a, mas a master well it, it is when you've got three channels master presence and a master volume there they are this side of the line we've also got the uh, channel select button here this one got a standby and a power nothing special there but then you come up to this little top bit that relates to the IRs Basically, you've got four banks, one, two, three, four, and you've got 16 IRs. So you can have, uh, for example, uh, each bank has got four cabs for a total of 16. To link an IR to a specific channel, for instant recall, select channel and desired IR, then hold the bank select button and cab select button for one second, if you get that here. Uh, and you can reset it from the front as well. So if you want to change it around at any time, that's okay. And then it's easy to come back and, and reset it. But more about these a bit later on. Uh, we'll be showing you what they sound like. And I'll be connecting a computer up uh, presently so you can see uh, how that's done. And then there's no confusion about it, is there? Well, there you go. I hope that's all proved to be very interesting. Uh, I thought it was a very impressive amp. By the way, you do get one of these type of things uh, that's on the top of the amp that sort of keeps you up to speed of what does what, if you will. <laughs> Although it's not really as complex as you might think it is. Fact is, it's pretty simple. Yeah. But there is that thing with the IRs uh, loading them up and things like that. And if you connect to PC, uh, you'll be able to see exactly how that works. And that's exactly what we're going to do uh, in a few moments. But before that, I just want to show you the other bits that come with this. Okay, well, here we go. Another little box. You get a foot pedal. Let's whip that out. To be honest, it's only a sort of basic pedal. Yeah, and goes off to the uni with an including lead. All interesting stuff or not depending what you like and there's also a mains lead yours may or may not look like mine but don't worry about that mine's the one that counts <laughs> let's move this out of the way and don't forget you do get the uh, the very nice cover that can sit over there for now so what I'm going to do now is uh, set up a PC and show you how we do that Nobody, uh, nobody's ever bothered to show you any of that. It's all simple enough, but it's nice to have a look, isn't it? Especially if you're one of them guys who couldn't afford one of these. You know, it's nice to have a look at what you can't afford sometimes. I mean, I look at, I look at cars I can't afford. That doesn't mean I don't like to look at them. <laughs> it just means I'm not buying one. There's a very subtle difference, and uh, most of these uh, reviewer types uh, don't quite get that, do they? Oh. So I'll, let me get the PC out. So let's just uh, quickly draw your attention to Sir PT15, which is popped in as drive E. That's what it's supposed to do. And uh, if we click that, you'll see on the screen when I move it. Once we've dropped into the, uh, the drive, you'll see bank one, bank two, bank three, and bank four. So if I just go and open one of them, there's cabinet one. And there's the uh, 
Celestian IR. I'm not sure if I can get any information out of that, but let's just have a look. Well, it doesn't really tell you much, but it does tell you right there. You can see that. We'll just scroll that a bit further down. Uh, it's 1152 kilobits. Yeah, the bit rate. It is. If we go a bit further down, we've got Sir G12M Greenback 4B12, blah, blah, blah. It's a wave file. So you can go t over to Celestian and download them from there. You have to pay for them, by the way. <laughs> so they do have a cost. Uh, and I can't really tell you much else about it because there's not much included. Except that they are 28k long or file size and that's about it. But you can see exactly how easy it is to, uh, well really, to put another one on. You can only have one, by the way, per directory. So we go back up. In each one of these, you've only got one. We go back here, we'd have gone to bank two, open cabinet two, you're only going to see one in all of them. And that really is the uh, the extent of how hard it is to, uh, to do. Pretty boring actually. Well, as you can see, uh, putting replacement IRs on is no big deal. In fact, it's simple. Even I can do it. <laughs> so it means you can. I'm just an ordinary guy, just like you are. Except I've got one of these to look at. Does that make me ordinary? Yeah, it does. I'm still as ordinary as you are. Let's go a bit further because I've got something else that's uh, interesting to ordinary guys. Uh, yeah, especially people like me and you. It's all about warranty. I printed it off the website because I can. And it says here, uh, electronics products. JST, which is John Sir, JST warrants for lifetime from date of purchase by the initial retail purchaser that the product should be free from de defects in workmanship. Electronic components such as capacitors, resistors, filters, transformers, jacks and pots covered for five years. And that's a, listen, that's a good thing. Any parts determined defected by JST within the five year time shall be repaired or replaced by JST without charge for parts and labour provided the unit is returned to, well this one says to America, let's hope not. Let's hope you've got the same warranty in England that you have the rest of the world. That wouldn't be fair else, would it? Warranty doesn't cover damage caused by accident, misuse, abuse, neglect, unauthorised or improper performed repairs, alterations and or wear and tear and all the rest of it. You'll know about all that. Please note, operating our amplifiers without a speaker load or using a re reactive load box that doesn't follow a speaker's true impedance curve may void the warranty. Well, on this one, it doesn't apply because it's already got one in it and you can run it without a speaker. Yeah, literally. So, some of it doesn't apply really. I just hope the warranty does. But I have a bit of trouble understanding. Maybe one of you guys will explain it to me how you can have a a lifetime from date of purchase but it's limited to five years that's not a lifetime unless you're going to die of coronavirus oh, it's... be safe and careful out there guys I could literally harp on and uh, spend hours talking about this thing but everybody's done a lot of talking about it out there hopefully this review makes the amp something different than what you might have thought it was and uh, when we get outside, I'll do a bit of playing, do a bit of running through. I'm no Pete Thorne, he does it for a living. What I do for a living, he couldn't do. Uh, so we're at different places. Yeah, I'm an ordinary guy and he isn't. <laughs> but you're an ordinary guy too. And that's who they're selling it to. They're not selling it to the Pete Thorns of this world. They're selling it to you and me. So what do I think overall of the Sir? I mean, it's clearly... Uh, premium brand it's got to be at 2700 quid or quids as the Americans would say or 3300 dollars I don't know how much it is in America but it ain't cheap uh, whatever the point is that 
for that sort of money, I'm almost comparing that with a Mesa Barber. Remember the M01? If you go and have a look, it's down there in the uh, text. And if you look at the quality and the build quality on the uh, the M01 and the sounds, bearing in mind that Steve Vai uses it, Joe Satriani uses it, Rappaport uses it, loads and loads of people use the M01. And I use it as a reference because it's sort of at this price range, give or take a couple of hundred pounds. And if it's good enough for Satriani and Vi and all those other people, trust me, it's good enough for you. So it's probably better than this one. But this is different. It's a different thing. But where quality comes to it, this doesn't touch the Mesobarber for quality. Mesobarber is probably the best internals I've ever seen on any amp. It's perfect. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And being in Europe, uh, the approvals are absolutely spot on on the Mesa Barber. This one uh, remains questionable unless somebody sends me a certificate. And then it's not questionable. But at the moment it is, because it's not in the handbook. Not anywhere. Can't find it anywhere. Okay, but uh, looking at the quality on this one, this is what we got to look at. The quality, what it offers, it's offering loads of things that others don't. And you could argue Let's take £400 off or $500 for the reactive load that's built into this because it's basically the same one that they sell. We could take that off. Then we could take this feature off here for the IRs. But what are you then left with? When you take those off and you take the little headphones thing, you take those three things off. Well, I hate to say it, but you're left with about a £1,300 amp. And that's the point. The uh, the likes of the one I looked at recently was about £1,300 and it was similar but it didn't have the reactive load, it didn't have the IRs and it didn't have the headphones but everything else was well, sort of similar. I don't know what it was like inside, I never got that far. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so it's not a cheap amp. You've got to sort of look at it as what it is and... Uh, relate to that. It's three channel amp, well sort of. I'm not disappointed with this amp, not at all. It's, uh, it, I wouldn't say it's good value for money, but it is value for money. And it's unique, pretty much unique. And that's what will allow me to, you know, I've listened to it, I've done all the stuff. It would allow me to say on this one, this is probably a 9 out of 10. It's not a 10 out of 10 because I've got no CE certification anywhere. It's just not there. But I do like the build. I like the sounds. I like most of everything about it. I like this IR thing that you can faff around with. I mean, to be honest, 16 IRs, to me, I don't need 16. And you know what? Neither do you. <laughs> you probably need three. <laughs> if you want the truth. You've got three channels on here. You can get away with one, but if you had three, well, to be honest, <laughs> to probably do the job. That's what you get on real amps, isn't it? Yeah. One. <laughs> one cab. But you can have one for each channel, and, and, and all them things add up. So it's a 9 out of 10. No more to say about that. And, uh, yeah. I think it's a runner. It's worth the effort. Or is it worth £2,700, £3,300 or more? might be more. You work it out yourself. Yeah. So there's not much left now except to go outside and have a blast with it. I think we should be doing that, shouldn't we? Huh? If you've got any questions before I go any further, put them down below. I always answer every one that I can't answer. If you ask me something ridiculous about inside that... I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer it. But nobody's saying anything, are they? Uh, there's no schematics. There's no information anywhere. So what you've seen today so far is probably more than you've seen on any review. None of them show you anything. Uh, but I think it's necessary. And it does get, help to give you a... Uh, it lets you have an informed decision 
That's important, an informed decision as to whether you buy one or you don't, because it's not just the sound. It's things like that warranty, but that warranty down there says five years or a lifetime. I can't figure out which, and does it apply to the UK or doesn't it? None of it's clear. Nothing is clear. So, all them things, it's just like, uh, they've done a brilliant job of the app, but just, you know, you just do them, all the few little things, and it could be brilliant. Okay, so when we get outside, uh, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, I'll play something on each, each one of these uh, channels, we'll call them that, and uh, faff around a bit with the bright and the, maybe these IRs. I'm only going to work on the ones it comes with because I couldn't be bothered to go and buy any. There are absolutely loads of IRs all over the internet. Um, and if you search for God IR, you could probably pull down the thousands that they give you for free. That's probably worth doing or not. I don't know. Don't know whether they're any good or not. They're just there. I think there's 5,000 or some ridiculous amount. Yeah. Pointless. Honestly, pointless. Uh, you might want to go to the Celestian site. On the Celestian site, they actually sell them so you can be selective and buy a few of your favourites. And uh, maybe you don't want your favourites, maybe you want some other IRs. But in either case, they're costing you about, uh, in England, I think they're costing you about £28 for about five of them. So they're not that cheap. Not as cheap as the God IR ones. <laughs> anyway. Enough of that. Don't forget to go to my website, which is on at the beginning and at the end of this video. And uh, we're going to go out there now. So, yeah, hold on. Looking forward to this. Okay, well, here we are with the uh, PT15 IR. And I've got it actually going off into the desk. So what you're going to hear on the, uh, the, the physical plane are these, these IRs, really. I'm on the Queen channel with the bright on. And you can see the settings roughly there. Doesn't sound too bad. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. 